if, you, if you're within your comfort zone, you're doing something wrong. That's something that my, my brother used to always say to me when I was young. Um, if something is maybe too easy for you um, at academy level, you have to push yourself and, you know, basically play against yourself and make yourself a better player. You have to be out of your comfort zone in order to achieve great things. And, um, you know, this style of play that we're playing now is different to anything that we've, we've ever played before, different to anything Man United has played before, I think. Um, so it's, it's obviously something new for us all. But like I said before, we're enjoying the challenge and um, we're looking forward to it. We're not, um, you know, throwing our arms up saying that we're working too hard and stuff like that. Everyone's everyone's together and, and focused. Marcus Rashford. It's time for us to have a chat about Marcus Rashford. I've already done one of these videos on Harry Maguire. I've done one of these videos on Cristiano Ronaldo. And plenty of you watched them. Plenty of you left your comments on them and engaged in them. So I think it's it's... It's good. I'm happy I'm started this series. It's, it's, it's an honest way for us to discuss key players and look at the full story around maybe Rashford's poor form. What's happened? What has happened to Marcus Rashford? That's what I'm going to talk about in this video. Please, if you do um, enjoy it, make sure you leave a comment down below. Make sure you subscribe to United People's TV. Hit that notification bell as well. You get a ping every time I go live with a new video. But let's speak about Marcus Rashford because, you know, rewind it back to 2015, eh? And that kid who broke through, that kid who only got an opportunity because Anthony Martial got injured in the warm-up against Midtjylland. Rashford came off the bench and he scored two against Midtjylland. He scored two against Arsenal. I was at that game against Arsenal. It was one of the best atmospheres I remembered at that time uh, uh, of United at Old Trafford. And then we fast forward to, you know, how Rashford progressed through the years. And it was that 2019-2020 season where him and Martial were going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. I think between them, they got over 50 goals, roughly 50 goals in all competitions <clears throat> that season. And he really, really took a massive step forward. And then we, we, we rewind, sorry, to last season. And Marcus Rashford played a phenomenal amount of football. I'm going to pull up all of his key stats per season. But last season, we all know he had a shoulder injury. He had a bit of an ankle ligament problem. But Rashford played through the pain barrier. He was the most dependable player and he was playing pretty damn well. He wasn't incredible. And I think that uh, that picture there was probably one of his worst performances of the season. Then the final against, um, who was it? Villarreal. I always forget it was Villarreal. No, yeah, it's Villarreal. Yeah. yeah. Penalties. <laughs> anyway, so Rashford had a bad performance in the final there and a lot of people used that against him. But Marcus Rashford, Played with an injury the whole, at least half the season. Shoulder injury, ankle injury. And it wasn't until after the Euros that he was finally able to get that shoulder surgery done. And that 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 part there is probably one thing that really gripes me. Uh, Marcus Rashford should not have been involved in that tournament. Gareth Southgate should have told him that he wasn't going to get any game time. Rashford hardly played a minute at all, but yet he was brought off the bench in the final and asked to take a penalty, and lo and behold, he missed because he was a bit rusty. I think that probably has played a, a little bit more of a significant role than anybody really gives it credit for. And I think probably the same goes for Jadon Sancho at the start of his season, who's now starting to flourish, but... Uh, yeah, I won't forgive Southgate for making Rashford take that penalty. I think it was an absolutely ridiculous choice. But then looking at this season now, with Marcus Rashford... That goal against West Ham, he came off... Did he come off the bench? I think he did. Uh, Manchester United needed it, needed it, needed it, and then just the explosion in Old Trafford when he scored that goal. None of us could, could have been happier that it was, it was Marcus Rashford because he just hadn't had that the start to the season that anybody truly expected. We all expected Marcus Rashford to come back from shoulder surgery a new man completely. You think, wow, if he's playing that good with the shoulder surgery and ankle problems week in, week out, despite not being 100% fit, imagine what he could do when he's completely fit. But Marcus Rashford hasn't hit those heights this year. But one thing I want to do quickly say and mention, because I don't think it's fair at all to speak about how good Marcus Rashford is without speaking about all the good work that Marcus Rashford has done off the pitch. And now for a lot of people, they see this as a reason as to why Marcus Rashford has lost focus on his football. They think that everything that Marcus Rashford is doing against the government uh, in terms of helping kids with the school meals, making the government, making Boris Johnson give two U-turns, getting an honorary doctorate. Marcus Rashford has proven himself as an incredible role model for any Manchester United player, 
for any youngster in England, for any young footballer, to use his position of power to create greater good. And people are so easy, uh, so quick to slam footballers for not doing that in the modern game. So I'm not going to, I'm not, I think it would be completely unfair to overlook how incredible that work has been that Marcus Rashford has done. Now, does that coincide with the fact that he's dipped this year? Yeah, it does. Does that mean it's a direct consequence of it? No, it doesn't. And to make that assumption, I think would be slightly unfair. But if you were to take a look, and, th and this, is th this is why we're now having a conversation about Marcus Rashford. It's the same reason I, I spoke about Harry Maguire when I spoke about Harry Maguire. It's the same reason I spoke about Cristiano Ronaldo when I spoke about Cristiano Ronaldo. And now it's the same reason why I'm going to be speaking about Marcus Rashford now. Because if you look at his... These are his stats from the 2019-20 season. As I said, this is when Rashford really sort of got United fans excited. We were like, wow, how good could Marcus Rashford be? 44 appearances, 22 goals and 12 assists in all competitions. Fast forward the year after, even though he was playing with, as I said, these injury issues, 57 appearances in all competitions, a huge amount of football, 21 goals and 15 assists. It's no wonder he was burnt out. And he should not have gone to Euro 2020, but you know, it is what it is. And then we fast forward to this year now. Now, of course, he missed the first few months of the season. Didn't play until October, I think it was. 21 appearances now in all competitions. Five goals and two assists. It really has dried up for Marcus Rashford. What's happened? You let me know what you think about this in the comments below. But let's try and discuss it. And I think a crucial part of this really surely has to be down. I would probably argue to this man. Because Jaden Sancho has really started to come through from, I would say, was it early December, roughly? Maybe mid-December, he started to really sort of come through and flourish. I would say Jaden Sancho now, he's more dangerous than that. What, what we've definitely seen from Rashford and from Sancho so far under Ralph Rangnick is a lot of ability to swap wings. They keep doing this, don't they? They keep doing that. Every 15, 20 minutes or so, you see Rashford and Sancho switching wings. Now, I think you're all in the same camp as me in saying that when we're looking at the best of Marcus Rashford, for me, the best of Marcus Rashford exists down the left-hand side. That's when you get his natural game. But <clears throat> one thing that Rashford, and I think this is the question that a lot of people are asking, is saying, right, okay, Sam, so you've just shown me there, you've shown me how good he was in the 2019-20 season. You've shown me how, despite playing through injury, Rashford was still banging in more than 20 goals in a season there. What's happened this year, though? The question is whether or not Marcus Rashford is stagnating. The question is whether or not Marcus Rashford is, is rounding his whole game, is spotting weaknesses in his game and improving on them. Um, because if I'm going to say a weakness of Marcus Rashford's game, I'm going to say that Rashford's brilliant when he doesn't really have too much time to think, does he? When Rashford has to act in instinctively, cutting to the edge of the box, maybe trying to get past a player, putting his foot through it, I think he's great. When Rashford has time to look up, think, <clears throat> I don't think he's quite as effective. But the thing that you're really seeing from Marcus Rashford this year is even his greatest strength has been sort of muted. He's, he's running at defenders there, but what he's doing, he's really, and I would say this is definitely a criticism, I would say, of Rashford's game the whole time. He definitely he keeps his head down. Rashford looks down when he runs at a player. And he does miss a lot, and then he runs into players. He looks a bit clumsy at times. And you're thinking, how are we going to get the best out of this Marcus Rashford? Or have we already seen the best? That's the question I really want to ask you. I think it's a fair question to ask because we've now got enough data. There's been enough games for us to make. Um, without it being a knee-jerk reaction, we can now have this open conversation about Marcus Rashford. And again, that's what these videos are designed to do. That's why I felt it was fair to do it on Harry Maguire when I did it. I felt it was fair to do it with uh, Cristiano Ronaldo. And I think it's fair to have these conversations now about Marcus Rashford. And certainly because of what we're seeing with Jadon Sancho. We're seeing that Jadon Sancho is just an incredible winger. We all knew he was an incredible winger, but we're now we're seeing it at Manchester United. And his ability to sort of run at defenders down here with the ball, dribble past them. You're thinking, what well, Rashford doesn't really... He's, he can't really do that. Not, not in the same quality. Not, not on the same scale. You're thinking, are we going to move Mash Rashford back in the middle? Well, we've kind of tried and tested whether or not Rashford would be a number nine. I think we've all agreed that, having seen enough of it, that Rashford's best position is probably on the left-hand side of a front three. I might argue that would be the best position for Jadon Sancho as well, though. And therein lies a bit of a problem. 
Now, when it comes to Jaden Sancho, it's not as if he can't play on the right wing. If you have a look here at the stats. This, these are these are the stats compiled from Jaden Sancho's last two seasons at Borussia Dortmund, and his output on the right wing compared to his output on the left wing. Now, look, he's got a better output in terms of goals, better output in terms of assists, better output in terms of shots. Most he's got a better output, but he's not exactly abysmal on the right wing. It's not to say that Sancho can only play on the left wing and can't play on the right. And I think that's what we're seeing from Ralph Radnick. We're trying we're seeing from Ralph Radnick, he's trying to refine this this Rashford. He's trying to refine that player. And I think the best way that he's going to possibly do that is by playing Rashford on the left hand side. Now, for me, I think Rashford. I think Rashford in the same way that Harry Maguire is struggling for confidence. I think Marcus Rashford is struggling for confidence and both of them are symptomatic of a team that is struggling with confidence. Rashford, absolutely. More so than Ronaldo, maybe not Sancho, but Rashford is a confidence player. When Rashford is confident and he's in full flow, he's, he's a sight to behold. We just haven't seen that, that confidence this year. And that's when you have to start make, asking questions because... We all expected to see it after he came back from that shoulder surgery. As I said, you know, he he's, he finally got that done. He's, he missed the first few months of the season. He took that time away from the club to say, look, you know what? I'm going to be in a much better position after this surgery to start contributing a lot more to this Manchester United team. And just simply put, we have not seen that this season. So that's why I think it, it's fair to ask the questions. I also think it's very fair of me to say that Nobody should be overlooking the incredible work that he's done as an ambassador for both Manchester United, for any young English footballer, for any young English man or girl. He has done so much off the pitch, and I don't think that can be um, just brushed under the carpet. Because, as I said, we're so quick as a society to slam footballers when they don't do things correctly. So when... Someone like Marcus Rashford comes out as a role model, then I, I think he deserves all that praise. Does it distract him away from football? I think it would be unfair to make that assumption. Does it line up coincidentally with, I suppose, his, his dip? Yeah, I think it does. But so does missing the penalty for England at Euro 2020. So does the fact that we were going through a pandemic at the same time. So if you want to talk about coincidences, there's more than one coincidence that's happened during that time. But I want you to tell me now, how do you get the most out of this Marcus Rashford? How do we refind this Marcus Rashford? The one who had in 44 games got 22 goals and 12 assists. The one who in 57 games got 21 goals and 15 assists for Manchester United. Instead of the Marcus Rashford we're seeing now, who in 21 games has got five goals and two assists. A man who doesn't look confident. A man who's a bit devoid of his own best characteristics and the one that we want to see return. And I want you to let me know in the comments below do you honestly think, uh, without having a, without having an agenda and without asking a question, do you feel that that we've seen the peak of Rashford there? Because I don't think we have. I think Rashford's still got more to give. I don't know what his ceiling is. I would say that Jaden Sancho's got a higher ceiling. I think he's a better, more gifted, natural footballer. But what do you think we need to do with Marcus Rashford this season now? How does Ragnit get the most out of him? How does the next boss get the most out of him? Let me know what you think about that in the comments below. As I said at the start of the video, if you, if you did enjoy the video, please consider subscribing down there, hitting the notification bell. You get a ping every time United People's TV and me go live. But let me know what you think about this Rashford situation because as I said, we need to talk about Marcus Rashford. And that's what this video is designed to do. No agenda, no bias, completely as impartial as possible. Let me know what you think about the whole Rashford situation going on at United right now. Take it easy.